Family, Merry Christmas. My name is June, one of the pastors here at Grace. And through your online chat, or if you're gathered around with your family, I want to encourage you to greet each other by saying, Merry Christmas. So type in right now, Merry Christmas, or say it to the person next to you. And you know that all that it means is joyfully worship Christ. Mary with joy, Christ, Mass, which is worship. So often you'll see this greeting being missed out in a lot of stores and places and spaces and gatherings. We need to restore that. Merry Christmas. It is season, tis season to worship. So thank you for worshiping with us, family. What a tremendous moment of worship and offering and, and the message and transition. Um, we would love to continue our, I'd love to uh, lead you into and continue the series on the Advent, the person of Advent, Emmanuel. So if you want to turn your Bible with me, it'll be from Isaiah 7, 14. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin will be with child and bear a son, and she will call his name Emmanuel. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this time. I thank you that we can worship. I thank you for those who are tuning in, not, not just watching, but in the spirit to worship you. They are here on a Wednesday evening because we love you, they love you. So bless us with your presence, for that is the greatest gift. It is in your name we pray. Amen. Emmanuel, the phrase, that name itself, means God with us, and it's a invitation. It's an invitation to enter his presence. This week, as I was studying Emmanuel and kind of going through my computer, I found something interesting. I found out that middle name of Pastor Tellus is actually Emmanuel with an E, and he's sitting right there. I was like, what a cool name. God with us, the presence of God. Because really, that is the gift the greatest gift. That is it. That is it. The presence of God. That's the ultimate. That's what we're going for. Recently, um, I've had, I guess over the course of last six months or so, I had different conversations with different people about worshiping online and how challenging it has been. And uh, one of the young men I was talking to and, and discipling, he came to me and said, Pastor, I, I need your help. Um, he's in a situation where he has to worship online because of his family's health and his job. He has to worship online constantly. He's saying, you know I love Jesus. I'm like, I know. I really want to. I, you know how much I lo love worshiping Jesus. I know. But it's just so hard. And pastor, I'm horrible at it now. And he started to kind of weep. And I'm like, tear up. And I'm like, okay, calm down. It's okay. Talk. Let's talk about it. He said, you know, I I'll get myself ready to, to worship Jesus, right? So I want, I want to get some coffee, you know, online service. I'm going to be awake. I'm going to be, be caffeinated to worship Jesus. I'm like, okay, that's a, not a bad start. And, and I'll be like, you know what? I kind of, you know, what would go great with this? Some sweets. It, it will help me and get me some energy. So I'll get some sweets. And I said, now I need something savory. And he'll get, he'll have a three-course meal by the end of the worship. He's saying, I can't focus in worship. What do I do? And the other day, I was just like trying to just stretch. I'm just stretching my legs as I worship Jesus. As I'm, you know what, I'm going to just worship Jesus and just get my work in, workout in as well. I'm like, hold up, what happened? I was just stretching, and I just got excited. And I did a whole set of push-ups. So that's what you did, Okay. Yeah, yeah, pastor. Help me. I'm horrible at worship now. And I kind of laughed and chuckled with him, and I told him, you know, I understand. We all struggle with this. I know your heart is good. I know our hearts are good, but it is more challenging to worship online, isn't it? And, and, and I, I reminded him that worship is, we, we are called to worship in spirit. And I remind him in the Old Testament times, it was about sacrifice. Something had to be given as a sacrifice. And I asked him, what is the sacrifice that you and I are bringing now in the New Testament? And he said, me? Yes. If you have that mindset, keep that in your spirit. Give yourself as a sacrifice. The presence of God will come find you where you are because that's what happened to Mary. That's what happened to Joseph, where they were, broken, in need, in that little town, Bethlehem. 
they, they had need, Mary and Joseph, they had need, but Christ was birthed in that unusual, unlikely place. So don't let limitations stop your heart of worship. And it was encouraged. And I also encouraged them this way too. You know, it is hard, isn't it, to feel the presence of God when you're worshiping just online. It is not the same. It is not the same. And I know you're all tuning in online as well. Praise God for you. On a Wednesday, you're amazing. Yet at the same time, isn't it, family, more challenging to experience the presence of God? Because this is never about getting, getting to know more about God and stopping there. That is great. But the knowledge of God is supposed to lead us, and that's what we want, the presence of God. And that's what we can miss in this day and age. Yes, we got podcasts and you go on Instagram, snippets of sermons from all over the world from these amazing speakers. Yes, those are helpful too. Go learn and study and listen to sermons. But sometimes when we're flooded with information and messages, we get the scarcity and the famine of the presence of God. The presence of God. And isn't that what Joseph and Mary and the whole generation was going through? They just went through 400 plus years of dark age where there was not a presence of God. Yes, they might have had the Old Testament to read through, maybe for, for, minor, for very few of them in, the, in that day and age, but they didn't have the presence of God. And then Christ came as Emmanuel, God with us, the presence of God. Isaiah 7, 14 records like this therefore the lord himself i love it himself it will no longer be through the words and the mouth of the prophets or the teachers or even in writings himself will give you a sign behold a virgin will be with child and bear a son the son of god and she will call him emmanuel imanu which means with us and l is short for elohim god with us God with us. And the setting of this passage is there was a King Ahaz who was kind of being rebellious to God. And God is saying, even though you are being rebellious, I'm still going to give you a sign. And you know what it was? It was an invitation to the presence of God. I know you want to walk away from me. I know you want to rebel against me. But here's still an invitation, Israel, because I love you. And I will never give up on you because you are my child. I will never. So he's saying, my sign will be God with you, myself. I've tried sending, sending my servants, my, my messengers, but they're not enough, I guess. So I'm going to come. I'm going to go. Myself, son of God, the presence of God came. It's an invitation to his presence. And it is kingdom come. I love it. It, the kingdom was always, always there, but it was never available for us to enter in. But now Christ came, the king, the presence himself, so the kingdom is here because king is here on earth. Therefore, it's no longer far away. We can just enter in. It became accessible to us for the first time ever. And he's saying, God with us. Now the question is, do you want to be with me? And, you know, we see that in Genesis as well. In the very beginning of the Bible, human beings, we, we sinned, right? Adam and Eve sinned. In Genesis 3, 8, this is what it says. They sinned before God, that they heard the sound of the Lord. This is interesting because in this day and age of podcasts and online messages, people hear the sound of God, maybe. But the trouble is, the problem is that we stop there. Because the sound of God is supposed to be a prompt, an invitation to the presence of God. Because what we're going for is not just the sound or the information or the knowledge. Yeah, those are great. The sound of the Lord is great. We're touched and moved and comforted by the sound of God. Yet that's an only a gentle and loving invitation to the presence of God. Actually, the truth is we sometimes don't delight in entering in the presence of God. Because let's continue to read. They heard the sound of the Lord walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and the man and his wife hid themselves from what? The presence of the Lord. God himself could have forced his presence upon them, showed himself in wrath because they were sinning anyway. They just sinned. They just sinned. It's gonna cost God his son. But he didn't do that. It was a gentle sound, gentle sound of him walking. It's an invitation. 
I want to I wanna hang out with you. I want to help you in this moment of need. Do you want me? And that gentle sound later became a baby. God himself, Emmanuel, coming again to say, I'm here. You left me, but I'm here myself. Not my voice, not my words, not my truth, but me, myself, my presence. I'm here. I'm here. I came to follow you. Luke 15, the father The father waited. The shepherd went to find the sheep. Love always seeks. Therefore, Christ says about kingdom, seek ye kingdom of God. Because love seeks and seeking results in love. You know, the truth is you and I don't have the ability to love God because it always takes God to love God. And God knew that. Our father knew that. He knows it about you and me right now as well. So what he does is, I know it's going to take me to love you anyway, so I'm going to come to you. I'm going to take the nine steps, but I need you to take that one step towards me. God with us. God with us. I love it. And Revelation 21, 3, I'm going to jump to the end of the book, just kind of like what AJ, Pastor AJ did with the whole survey of the Bible. Revelations 21, 3 says, and I heard, and this is the new heaven and new earth, our dream, our vision, the ultimate. I heard a loud, loud voice from the throne saying, behold, the tabernacle is God of God is among men, the presence of God, and he will dwell among them, the presence of God, and they shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. So what has been happening across the different dispensations, the ark of God standing in the middle of the camp, being making sure that the presence of God was there. And then now the tabernacle of David, the presence of God. And then the temple of Solomon, the presence of God. And then later for us, Christ himself coming. And then when he went back to heaven, you know what he said? I'm going to send you a comforter. Holy Spirit, and now in this dispensation where you and I are, we have the presence of God now with us. God with us. God with us is always present tense. It's always present tense in that God is with you right now, family. The Holy Spirit wants to speak to someone listening right now. He's with you. You had doubts about it, and God is saying, I am with you right now. You know that I was with you in the past and you're now wondering and pondering with all these things that I did wrong. Are you with me right now? And and God is saying, just like how I did in Genesis 3, just like how I did 2,000 years ago in, in, in the town of Bethlehem, Emmanuel, I am with you right now. It was just different tools and different ways, but in in, in all those different dispensations, the theme was same, God with us, the presence of God, in new heaven and on earth that will be completed in a fullest manifestation to say God himself will dwell among them, and they shall be his people, we shall be his people, and God himself will be among them. You know what I love about the book of Revelation? It It was given to a disciple whom Jesus loved. The guy who probably loved Jesus, and, and Jesus says, I love this guy a lot. It was a relation of love. And in that, in that relationship, God gives a book called Book of Revelations, the end times, the full restoration of presence of God, which, think about it. If you're Apostle John, and if you're wired to love and be relational, you are cast out to an island, isolated, social isolation, imprisoned by himself in an island, he would be lonely. That would probably be more devastating to him to, than, than lashes on his skin because he was lonely. And God is saying, I'm with you and my presence will show up soon, my son. Surely I'm coming back soon. He says, amen. Come, Lord Jesus. I miss you. I used to be able to hug you and lay my head in your bosom. I can't do that anymore. Without your presence, I need you. Come back, king. Come back, my king. It was a response of love. And this Christmas season, I think that response of love is required in the same way. The question that God is asking us is the same. Yeah, we're all singing about Christmas, and actually a lot of the singing is just about Santa or or Elsa. I don't know. But the question is always the same. 
I'm here. I'm with you. Are you with me? Family, let's respond to God by saying, yes, God, I want to be with you. Emmanuel, thank you. Emmanuel, thank you. God with us. Elohim, you are with us. Therefore, our response ought to be, and it will always be, yes, God. And we choose daily, just like in your marriage. You choose your spouse daily, or you should, if you haven't for a long time. We should. We choose God daily. It's not a one-time decision to say, yes, I believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm a sinner. Oh, now that prayer is done and over with. Now I'm going to enter. No, no, no. That's the misunderstanding of heaven. It's not a magic thing. It's, it's not a magic thing that you just pray out. No, no, no. It's not that. It's not a spell. No, that would be wrong. But it's a person. We enter into that throne. I want to finish with just one story. I grew up in a Christian family, um, Korea, and then in Hong Kong. I grew up at church, made all the mistakes and mess up, like, you know, chipping away at the paints and taking a marker that didn't realize was permanent and drawing on those fresh painted walls. I've done all that at my church. Stealing cookies from church cabinets. God, forgive me. I've done all that when I was little, right? I grew up at church, but I never really knew Christ. I saw my friends coming to Christ, but I just like, it doesn't work with me. At eighth grade, I was invited to come to serve a mission team in, in Hong Kong. And they came, and they're Korean people coming from Korea to now evangelize to the, the Hong Kong um, Chinese people and then to China. They came, and they paired up with a team from their local team, Hong Kong. So there's, there's people who just speak Cantonese or Chinese, and then here's only people who speak just just. Korean, and I'm in the middle, and they're saying, translate these languages, Korean into Chinese, and then Chinese into English, and English back to Korean. I'm like, I'm confused. I've studied English and Chinese for like two years. I'm not good enough for this. And it's not just regular translation. They want me to translate a sermon. I can't translate a sermon or a prayer. So what do I do? I just make stuff up. Pastor would preach. I'll stand next to him. I'll just say whatever that comes to my I don't know what he's saying in Chinese and Cantonese. I don't know. I'm just making stuff up. I barely speak the language. And people say, amen, hallelujah. I'm like, I don't know what's going on. So that was my very first sermon. Horrible thing to do as someone who's going to be a pastor, just making stuff up. Basically lying on the pulpit. That's what I did. And I did it for the whole course of the 14 days, the whole mission team. The whole the 14 days, the whole mission trip, I was lying to them in both languages. No one knew till the last night. There was this guy who came over, was, he was going through his testimony, and I was doing the same thing. The 40 minutes of his testimony, he's just lying through it, making stuff up, being really creative. Creative, right? I'm just creating story, right? And then in one moment, one instant, I understand and know what he's saying. Past 40 minutes, everything that he's been saying, I just know. And I go, Okay, I need to repent. So I told everyone, I'm so sorry, people. I've been lying to you for the last 14 days. <laughs> and they had a puzzled face. But here's something that he actually said. And I spoke for the next 15 minutes or so of what he said last 40 minutes. People were perplexed and filled with the grace of God at the same time. They felt betrayed and loved at the same time. And I was confused as well. That night, we were just staying in a motel somewhere. I was lying in bed, and I was confused, yet I couldn't deny the presence of God. I had all the knowledge, all the right knowledge about who Christ was. His death, his birth, the resurrection, everything. I was trained or equipped. I went through multiple books on doctrine. Didn't feel the presence of God. But that one moment, I couldn't deny that God existed. And when I felt the presence all I could say is, this is better than anything I know thus far. I don't want to ever want to leave it. I want this more and more. This will be the goal of my life, the vision of my life. Better is one day in your courts than thousands elsewhere. And I said, if you would permit me, God, I want to go into ministry. Because your presence is better than anything. Knowledge is great. It's awesome. But that, the goal, the ultimate goal of that is the presence of God. May you and your family welcome, invite, enjoy the presence of God, Emmanuel, this Christmas. 
Love you, family. Let's pray. Father, I thank you. I thank you, Lord Jesus. With your eyes closed, if you've never received this Emmanuel, God with us as your Lord and Savior, I want to lead you through through a prayer. If you want to say yes to that invitation, you can do that right now. Just repeat after me in this prayer. Jesus, I am a sinner. Yet you came. And you died for me. And you want to be with me. And now, I want to be with you. Starting this day to eternity. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. I receive you as my Lord and my Savior. Father, I just want to pray for everyone who's under the sound of this broadcast, whether it be on the 23rd or later, I pray that you'll come and allow us to experience your presence because that is better than anything. That is our goal. That is what we live. That is our purpose. We just want to be there. Help us. Help our families. It is in your name I pray. Amen. If any one of you pray, just pray that prayer. Would you text? Would you text? I don't know. New life, new life to 25827 or church online. Click on raise, uh, raise your hand. And then we want to connect with you. And we just want to love on you, give you a gift and help you uh, to, to start this new, new step in, your, in our spiritual family. And also, if you want to get some prayer done uh, or, or if you want to receive some prayer, that is, that is great. Click live prayer. And then we'll be able to set up a one-on-one moment with you, with our prayer warriors and our people who love you, who's going to love on you and pray, talk to God on your behalf. Lastly, as Heather said, see you tomorrow. Merry Christmas, and we do have worship tomorrow online as well. So join us for tomorrow night. Bye-bye now. Merry Christmas to you and your family.